This is the Solving Polynomial Inequalities tutorial. The first method I'd like to discuss in solving polynomial inequalities is the algebraic method. Solve the following inequality algebraically and then graph its solution set. So let's go ahead and treat this as an algebra problem. We've got 2x cubed is greater than negative 4x squared. Because it's an inequality, I want to get everything over to one side and set it equal to zero. So, I'm going to add 4x squared to both sides of the equation. This is usually a good strategy when you're dealing with cubic or quadratic, anything with an exponent greater than 1. So we've got 2x cubed plus 4x squared is greater than 0 now because the negative 4x squared and the positive 4x squared canceled each other out on the right hand side. Now I'm going to divide everything by 2 because I can see that that's a factor of my terms on the left hand side. When I do, we're going to have x cubed plus 2x squared is greater than 0 because 0 divided by 2 is still 0. Now I'm going to pull an x squared out of my terms on the left hand side. So I've got x squared times x plus 2 is greater than 0. So I can now take each of these terms from my inequality and set them equal to 0. We've got x squared is greater than 0 and we've got x plus 2 is greater than 0. Well for my top equation, this inequality here, I'm going to take the square root of both sides and I'm going to get x is greater than positive or negative 0. So that's one possible answer for my solution set. And then I've got x plus 2 is greater than 0, so I'll subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. When we do, we have x is greater than negative 2. And that's another possible answer for our solution set. Now what we want to do when we're working with polynomial inequalities is to graph them on a number line. So I'll go ahead and bring in my number line here. And let's plot the points that we know. We're pretty sure that we've got x is greater than 0, so I'm going to just put a little marker right below 0 here as a point to test. And then we've got x is greater than negative 2. So I'm going to put a little marker here to test as well. Now when we're dealing with polynomial inequalities, we want to test all the different regions of this number line graph. So everything from the left to negative 2 should be considered to be one region that we need to test. Between negative 2 and 0 should be one region that we need to test. And from 0 to the right in the positive direction should be a third region that we need to test. These little markers that we dropped in at these points break up our number line into regions that we need to test to see if our polynomial inequality works out the way we want it to. So I'm going to choose a point to the left of negative 2 to test that region first. I'll choose negative 3. And I'm going to go ahead and run it through this reduced form of our polynomial inequality. So we've got negative 3, and I'm plugging it in for x now, negative 3 squared times negative 3 plus 2 is greater than 0. Well negative 3 squared is 9 and negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. And 9 times negative 1 is negative 9 which is not greater than 0. So this region to the left doesn't work out. Now let's try negative 2. So we've got negative 2 squared times negative 2 plus 2 is greater than 0. Well negative 2 squared is positive 4 and negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 4 times 0 is 0 but 0 is not greater than 0, it's equal to 0. So we know that negative 2 doesn't work. However because it's so close, 0 being greater than 0, I have a feeling that we're going to be putting an open circle here. So we've got our open circle here at negative 2 because it doesn't include 0. It's going to be greater than 0, but it doesn't include that. So let's try our next point, negative 1. So we've got negative 1 squared times negative 1 plus 2 is greater than 0. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, and negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1 is greater than 0. 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 is greater than 0. 
so we know that this region of our graph works. Let's see what happens when we get to our point zero. So, zero squared times zero plus two is greater than zero. Well, zero squared is zero, and zero plus two is two, is greater than zero. Two times zero is zero, and zero is not greater than zero. So here, we're gonna have another open circle. So we're gonna have a shaded region on our line between negative two and zero, but not including either of those points. Now let's test a point to the right of zero in the positive direction here. So let's pick something easy, let's just pick one. We've got one squared times one plus two is greater than zero. One squared is one, and one plus two is three, is greater than zero, and three is greater than zero. So, all of this region on our graph works. So if you were to graph our particular inequality here, this is what your graph would look like, and you'd want to do it on a number line. It'd be everything greater than negative two, not including zero. Now that we've looked at solving polynomial inequalities algebraically, let's take a look at solving rational inequalities algebraically. So in this problem, they'd like us to solve the following inequality algebraically and then graph its solution set. Well, in looking at our inequality, I can already tell you that x is not going to be able to equal 3. And that's because if you had 3 down here for x, 3 minus 3 is 0, and you can't define anything by 0. So we're going to continue to work it out, but right off the bat in looking at it, you can already figure out that x is not equal to 3. So let's take our inequality over here, x plus 2, over x minus 3 is less than or equal to 4. What I'm going to do is multiply by x minus 3 on both sides of the equation first. When we do that, the x minus 3 cancels off the bottom on the left, and we've got x plus 2 remaining. And that's going to be less than or equal to 4 times x minus 3. Now I want to factor that 4 through our parentheses set. We're going to distribute it. So on the left, we've got x plus 2, and that's less than or equal to 4 times x, which is 4x. And 4 minus 3 is negative 12, so 4x minus 12. Now, I want to get all our x's on one side and our numbers on the other because I can tell that this is a linear equation. There is no squared or cubed term. The variable is not raised to any power greater than 1. So we want all of our x's on one side. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides of the equation. And I'm also going to add 12 to both sides of the equation. On the left, when we subtract x, the x's disappear. And we've got 2 plus 12 because we added 12 to both sides. So that's 14. And that's less than or equal to, on the right-hand side, 4x minus x is 3x, and negative 12 plus positive 12 cancels itself out. So we now have 3x is greater than or equal to 14. We want x alone, so I'm going to divide by 3 on both sides of the equation. On the left, we've got 14 over 3. And on the right, we've got x. So x is greater than or equal to 14 over 3. And we know that x cannot equal 3. So what we want to do now is bring in our number line. And we want to mark those important values on our number line. We know that there's stuff going on at 3, so I'm going to drop a marker here at 3. And we also know that there's stuff going on at 14 thirds. And 14 thirds is roughly 4.66. So I'm going to go 2 thirds of the way between 4 and 5, and I'll mark here as well. So we want to test everything that is to the left of 3 on our axis here. That's one region to test, so we'll pick a value in there. We want to test 3. We want to test everything between 3 and 4 and 2 thirds. We want to check 4 and 2 thirds, and then we want to check everything to the right of 4 and 2 thirds. So let's begin by checking some value less than 3. Let's go ahead and just plug in 0. And I'm just going to plug it into our original equation here. So 0 plus 2 over 0 minus 3 should be less than or equal to 4 if this is a true statement. Well, 0 plus 2 is just 2, and 0 minus 3 is negative 3, and that's less than or equal to 4. 
And yes, negative 2 thirds is less than or equal to 4. We know that we've got an open circle at 3 because x cannot equal 3. So I'm going to place an open circle here on our number line. And we just want to shade in this direction to the left onto infinity for our graph. If you were going to write this in interval notation, by the way, this region of the graph would look something like this. Parenthesis, negative infinity, comma, 3. And we use parentheses on both sides here because it's not inclusive. You can't include negative infinity because you can't define negative infinity. And we know that we're not including the point 3 because we have an open circle there. So this would be the interval notation for the left side of our graph. Now let's try a point greater than 3. And remember, we don't have to check 3 in this case because we already know that x cannot equal 3. So I'm going to choose 4 because that's a nice convenient point between 3 and 4 and 2 thirds. So we'll plug it back into our original equation, 4 plus 2 over 4 minus 3 should be less than or equal to 4. Well, 4 plus 2 is 6, and 4 minus 3 is 1. So we've got 6 is less than or equal to 4, and that's not true. Which tells me that we're not going to shade between these two points. So we want to know now what's going to happen at 4 and 2 thirds. So let's go ahead and use that point, 14 thirds. We've got 14 thirds plus 2 over 14 thirds minus 3 is less than or equal to 4. Now I'm going to make our integers here 2 and negative 3 in terms of being over 3. So 2, if you were to put it as a fraction over 3, is going to be 6 thirds. So we've got 14 thirds plus 6 thirds on top over 14 thirds minus 9 thirds, because 9 thirds is equivalent to negative 3, or negative 9 thirds is negative 3. And that's still less than or equal to 4. We'll combine our like terms on top. 14 thirds plus 6 thirds is 20 thirds. And that's going to be over 14 thirds minus 9 thirds, which is 5 thirds. That should be less than or equal to 4. Now we've got a fraction over a fraction, so I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of our denominator, which is going to be 3 over 5. When we do that, we're going to get rid of our denominator. On top, the 3's are going to cross cancel, and we have 20 over 5. 20 over 5 is 4, so we have 4 is less than or equal to 4. And that's true. So in this case, we want a closed circle at 4 and 2 thirds, and we want to shade everywhere to the right of that region. And we're just going to double check that by picking a point to the right of the region and checking that. So let's just pick 5 because it's convenient. So 5 plus 2 over 5 minus 3 should be less than or equal to 4. 5 plus 2 is 7, and 5 minus 3 is 2. That's less than or equal to 4. 7 halves is 3.5, and 3.5 is less than or equal to 4. So since that's true, we are going to shade to the right. So your graph should look something like this. And in this case, if you'd like to write the answer in interval notation, we'll do that up here to the right of our graph. So we're going to have bracket 14 over 3, because we're including that point, 14 over 3, comma, infinity. And this is going to be parentheses because you can't define infinity, so we can't include that point, infinity. So now that we've seen how to solve polynomial inequalities, let's take a look at a word problem. The daily cost C to a video game developer to maintain its online gaming server is C of X is greater than or equal to 55X minus 250,000. The average daily cost C is provided by C of X is greater than or equal to 55X minus 250,000 over X. How many players must be playing each day if the average daily cost to play is $1.50? But well, we want to plug in that $1.50 into our cost of x. So we've got $1.50 is greater than or equal to 55x minus 250,000 over x. 
Well, we know right off the bat that x cannot equal 0, because if it did, you'd be dividing by 0 and that wouldn't work. So the first thing we want to do here is multiply by x on both sides of the equation. When we do, we've got 1.5x on the left is greater than or equal to 55x minus 250,000. Because the x canceled off the bottom on the right. Now I can see that I'm dealing with a linear inequality, so I want to get all my x's on one side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract 55x from both sides of the equation here. On the left, I have a negative 53.5x, and that's going to be greater than or equal to negative 250,000. Because our 55 and negative 55x canceled each other off. So, I now want to divide by a negative 53.5 on both sides of the equation. The negative 53.5 is going to cancel from the top and bottom on the left and give us x is now less than or equal to because we divided by a negative so we flip our sign and negative 250,000 divided by negative 53.5 is positive 4,673. So what this tells us is that we need some number of players greater than zero so x must be greater than zero, but it's got to be less than or equal to 4,673. If there are more than 4,673 players playing right now, it's going to cost them more than $1.50 to maintain that server.